Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we got a service call that there is no air conditioning in my own van Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech it is over 100 degrees inside this car and I think it's time for some air conditioning Alright Looking at 110 degrees right now so, got the AC set to cool, fan set to high. Let's turn on this AC. Right, we got a good 99.9 .9 degrees. That is not acceptable. <laughs> Let's begin by checking the refrigerant pressures in my truck. I did pick up these yellow jacket fittings. This is for the low side and this is for the high side of my system. And these are the couplers to connect to the car. So here are the couplers. We're just gonna connect our low side pressure hose to this port and our high side pressure hose into this port. And then from there, this side gets connected to the vehicle. So here's my low side pressure port. And here is my high side pressure port. This is a Ford Ecoline. E250. All right, as you can see, we're reading zero pounds of pressure on both sides. These couplers are super easy to put on. Honestly, you just push it in, boom, you're connected. So let's see, we have a 25 standing pressure. Just do the same for the high side, just push it in. And we are equalized at 25 pounds of pressure. For vehicles, we use R134A. So in fact, this is not an air conditioner, but a refrigerator because R134A is used in refrigeration. All right, so our ambient temperature is around 91 degrees. That is correct. And with this standing pressure, we are completely off 100%. We are off with the refrigerant charge. There is a known leak in this vehicle as many vehicles have this issue. So about every year or so, we do need to top this off. So let's see how we can fix this. According to our PT chart, we should be at least above 100 pounds of pressure for our standing pressure, as there is a correlation between pressure and temperature. So as the temperature rises, the pressure rises, and as temperature decreases, your refrigerant pressures decrease. So I got my tank hooked up. So this is my middle hose. This is a brand new tank of R134A, that good stuff. And let's just follow our gauges. So here's our low pressure gauge. Here's our low pressure hose connected to our low side. Here is our high pressure gauge. And here's our high pressure hose connected to the high side of our system. The low side is always gonna be the larger pipe and the high side is always gonna be the smaller pipe and that is in diameter just like in the field. So, right now I have both my valves closed. What we're gonna do is we can open up this port here. Let's spin this counterclockwise. Right there, we're open. So now we have refrigerant in this yellow hose. What we wanna do is open this up. We just let out some refrigerant and that is because we had to purge our lines. So we got the air out of the hose. If you have air in your refrigerant piping, you're gonna contaminate the system. What happens? If your tank is standing upwards, you're gonna be charging your refrigerant as a vapor. And if you flip this around, you're gonna be charging refrigerant as a liquid. I do like to charge these systems as a vapor as they are very small so you don't get that huge drop in pressure. So let's turn on the car and see if this even budges to see if this even starts. I doubt it. If it does, then we might have an issue with our low pressure control because right now it really should be holding us out so we don't damage our compressor. So let's start the car. All right, nothing even budged. We must be off on our low pressure control. So if you just follow the low pressure pipe, this little control right here, and that is our low pressure control. 
right now I'm gonna charge some refrigerant from the high side as when this when the compressor is off I charge from the high side but when it's running I charge from the low side so let's bring this pressure up so right there we're bringing up our pressure right there it just started let's follow that low pressure gauge boom it starts then shuts off right now we are short cycling so when it starts i'm going to open up the low pressure hose all right so i added some refrigerant so we have a 75 standing pressure and when i turn on the ac it's just short cycling way too crazy so for now i want to open up my high pressure hose while the compressor is off and try to get this pressure to climb up as you can see it is slowly climbing i want to get a decent amount of refrigerant inside there because short cycling that compressor like that is no good for it it's a lot of wear and tear on and off on and off okay our compressor is starting kicks back on at about 45 pounds tripping at about 10 so when the compressor starts i'm going to open up the low side hose you see we've opened the gauge it is still short cycling we want to bring that pressure up Okay, now since I added refrigerant, the compressor is staying on. As you can see, we're not short cycling anymore. We have a 20 pound back pressure and about a 140 pound head pressure. So we do have a pressure differential. We are staying on. We are still low, but now we can at least stay on. I want to bring this up to 25 pounds for now. That's what I want to see. So, when you're dealing with a car, when you press the gas pedal, your low side pressure is gonna drop. And as you can see, we were cutting off at about 10 pounds or so. So, you wanna give this a bit more gas than usual than a regular refrigerator because there is no gas pedal that affects this. These compressors are belt driven. So it is a bit different when it comes to vehicles. All right, we got a good 53 degrees coming out of here. But one thing I want you guys to see. So there's our low pressure gauge. When I press the gas, you can see we're coming down. Boom, we just equalized on the high side. The system actually just shut off. Right there, we just started again. So, you want to go a little bit higher than usual than it would be a regular refrigerator because when you press the gas it might cut off on you on low pressure and once again you're going to be short cycling your compressor as you're driving so you want to add a bit more than usual so right now i got it at about 35 back pressure but right now i have a 200 head pressure and that's indicating that my you know my radiator my condenser coil in this case needs a wash so I do not want to add too much more refrigerant. Okay, I got a 190 head pressure. It's a bit high. I would like it lower, but it is what it is. So I'm going to leave it at a 35 back pressure while I'm not pressing the gas. Our temperatures are coming down and that's because I'm pressing down the gas right now on the vehicle. So as our temperatures are coming down, that means our pressures are coming down in our circuit, as I explained. So 47 degrees, I cannot complain compared to 100 degrees. So I'm feeling comfortable with these pressures. I got a 35 back pressure when the car is not operating, as if it is not driving. So I feel pretty comfortable with that. We got some good temperatures. It's way better than 100. I do want to give this radiator slash condenser coil a cleaning. Good wash would be a good idea. And yeah. If anybody found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you all next time.